Uh, let's get started. Uh, we want to start off tonight with Dan Gibbs, who is uh, the CEO and founder of Hometown Farms, uh, which is a really innovative business plan. I'm not even going to try to describe it. I'm not even going to set it up because he's going to do uh, a, a much better job than I could ever do. So I am going to turn the mic over to Dan. Um, here we go. How's everybody doing tonight? Good. Good deal. Um, I think what I'm going to do is kind of start off, kind of give you a general overview, and then kind of get into the benefits of what this is, and then kind of show you exactly what we're doing. Um, really what I'm talking about tonight is something that's really taken a lot of components that are not new, but just putting it together in a new way. Can everybody hear me okay? Okay. Um, so really, what I'm, so like I said, old components taken from other industries and combining it in a new way. There's really four components of what we're doing, and what we're doing is called commercial vertical urban farming. It's really focused on the farming aspect of the urban environment, but on the basis of being able to feed the masses. Um, you know, victory gardens, regular urban gardens, all wonderful things, but because of the volume that you grow per square foot, it's hard to feed the masses. So really, hometown farms, and what I'm going to speak about, is really the concept of feeding the masses. Now, there's four components that we put together. This is not just a farming operation, but it's really a model, and, it, and like I said, taking different components. So what you have is you have high-efficiency growing systems that are currently being used on millions of acres outside of the city all over the world. And these systems have been used for over for decades. So what we're doing is taking those systems, scaling them down, and then moving them into the city. So once they're in the city, then part, the other part of our model is direct-to-consumer sales. And then the last component of the model is growing on that farm just enough of each product that you don't have to distribute the product more than five miles away. So traditionally, a lot of farmers will grow one or two items, lots of it, and now subsequently you have to distribute it 10, 15, 20, or hundreds of miles. We grow a basket of products and I like to call it its demand-driven farming. So this particular farm that we build in a community will supply a five-mile radius, and we can actually grow what that community <coughs> wants. So that's the components. High-efficiency growing systems moved into the city with direct-to-consumer sales, and then a product mix that allows you not to have to distribute your product more than five miles. I think what I'm going to do you now, I'm going to get into some of the problems with the ag um, that, that Jason just kind of touched on, I'll hit it real close. And I think there's two major components in, in what Jason just said. We got population. At, at 1900s, we had 2.5 billion people on this earth. And depending on if you believe that it, it took 10,000 years or 20,000 years for civilization to get there, but year 1900, we were at 2.5 billion. I think as of this month, we hit 7 billion people. We are basically growing at 200,000 plus people a day even after famine, death, everything you throw at us humans, we're growing at over 200,000 a day. And a lot of those people would like to eat at least once or twice a day. So we got a few food issue that's coming up here. The other one is, is weather patterns. Call it man-made, call it nature, call it the cycle of the earth, it doesn't matter. Some areas are becoming wetter, some areas are becoming drier. So as the farmers try to figure out what to grow in that area or transfer their crops to something that's more appropriate to the weather pattern, your yields are decreasing. So you get increasing population, weather patterns that are causing uh, supply shortages or decreased yields. Uh, food right now, uh, according to USDA, one out of eight people have a hard time eating or would not, would go hungry without government assistance. Um, San Diego, I mean, they just passed the uh, Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act in year 2000. Lots of kids going hungry. I think I just saw on TV they said one out of five or one out of four kids in our country today goes hungry. So this is really an issue that's happening now, and it's only going to get worse. Okay, vertical urban farming. What kind of solution, what does it do for us? Basically, these high-efficiency systems, which I'll get into a little bit more detail later, they allow us to save 85% of the water used. For example, tomatoes take anywhere from 500,000 to a million gallons to grow one acre. These systems can grow the same acre for 150,000 gallons. It's a huge savings. Reduces food fertilizer consumption by 80%. Fuel and um, carbon output by 90%. It only use, it uses 70% less land. These are real things that can help us with our food issues. 
Here's some numbers that we have calculated, and if anybody's interested, I can show the data before. Am I down to one minute? <coughs> oh boy, am I going quick. Here's some numbers, take a look. <laughs> Big savings on fuel. <laughs> uh, here's another thing. Our food system um, is only about 70 years old for fresh produce. Basically, these, you know, what we've done, let me slow down, I'll get it whatever I can get into you guys. Uh, basically, over the past 70 years, we've gotten to a food system where we pick our produce one to two weeks early. Most of the nutrients come in the last week on the vine. Then it takes a week or two for it to get to market. UC Davis published a study and said that most produce loses phytonutrients with 35 to 75% within one week of it being picked. So basically, we're, we're feeding people hollow food with all the calories, and we're wondering why there's issues. Here's just, uh, just some, a slide showing that the technology that we're using is existing. Uh, this is a traditional supply chain of how our produce gets from the farmer to where we purchase it. And as you can see with Hometown Farms, it just cuts everything out. So really, it's, it's taking all of those savings and passing it on to the people. Our business model is pretty simple. We build stores connected to the farm. So when people were in high traffic areas, we're right where people live. So when people want to buy produce, they literally come to the farm. They walk into the store. And for example, the back of the store will have windows. You look through the windows, you see how your food's grown. You'll know exactly how your food's grown, where it's grown. So it's directly to the consumer. <coughs> The jobs are endless. Uh, this is a brand new industry. So you have jobs in every aspect. You have management, you have marketing, you have operations, retail. It really, no matter what your interest is, if you want to be involved with ag and urban farming, there's a place for you. Uh, in summary, this is probably one of the simplest things that we can do for fresh produce. Uh, by moving fresh produce, moving it into the city, growing it here, selling it here, uh, it, it saves so much on the environment, it provides healthier food, and it allows in less expensive foods so people can eat quality food.